Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to do another paraboloid example using rectangular coordinates. This time, our paraboloid is directed in the z direction. The last time was in the y direction. Does it make a difference? Well, it's the exact same problem, but the limits are kind of turned around somewhat. And so the order of events, the order in which we're going to integrate may change and the actual limits may change as well. The technique is pretty well the same, but it helps to see an example where the paraboloid is directed differently, just to get more familiar with the methodology. So we're going to integrate over all the little dvs. dvs, of course, are just small little volume elements like this, and the dv would be a dy dx dz or dy up. Whatever order it is, it's simply the product of those three uh, dy dx dz limits. Hmm. So let's see here. Which one should we do first? Well, before we decide that, let's take a look and see what the integration limit should be. Notice when we integrate in the y direction, if we start from the x, the x z plane and we go out, eventually we will hit the surface of that paraboloid. And that surface will depend upon the values of both z and x. Since the paraboloid is defined as z is equal to x squared plus y squared because it's, it's, uh, it's not an elliptical paraboloid, it's a circular paraboloid like that, uh, then we realize that the value for y from the xz plane outward in the y direction will depend upon both z and x. So that means that if we start from the xy plane where y is equal to 0 and we go outward, we're only covering half the paraboloid, so we have to multiply times 2. Let's do that here, times 2, and our y limits are going to go from 0 to the square root of z minus x squared. Then if we integrate in the x direction, notice that if we look at the z, the zx plane right here, notice the distance that you go in the z direction does depend upon the value of z. The bigger value z is, the, f the farther you go out in the x direction, the smaller the value z is, the, small, the, the shorter distance you go in the x direction before you hit the edge of that paraboloid. So we can see that there's a relationship where z equals x squared. Essentially, that's a parabola in the zx plane. And so x can be written as the square root of z. So the x limits are going to go from 0 to the square root of z, but again, that only takes half the paraboloid, so we have to multiply times 2, because essentially we're only taking the uh, right half and the front half, that's essentially one quarter of the volume of the paraboloid, so we have to multi multiply times 4 to get the full volume. So now we have the limits for y, we have the limits for, uh, for x, x equal from 0 to square root of z, and now in the z direction, now there's no longer any limits, we go from 0 to the top of the paraboloid, which at that point that is equal to 4, so our z limits are going to go from 0 to 4. And that will then be our integral that we have to work. It's a triple integral. So also notice that the limits become simpler. We have here a function of two variables, a function of one variable, and a function of no variable, just a constant. All right, so you see that typically that always becomes simpler. Here we're integrating over y, then we're integrating over x, then we're integrating over z. So y first, then x, then z, and that's the best order in this particular case, the way the problem is set up. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's first integrate over dy. So that means that our volume is equal to 4 times the double integral. We still have z equals z equals 0 to 4, and x equals 0 to the square root of z. And then here we have y evaluated from 0 to the square root of z minus x squared. And we still have our dx and our dz. When we plug in the upper limit, we get the square root of z minus x squared. Plug in the lower limit, you get 0. That means that our volume is now equal to 4 times the double integral. z goes from 0 to 4 x goes from 0 to the square root of z, and here we end up with the square root of z minus x squared, that would be dx dz. So now if we integrate the next integral, it's going to be over x, that means z is a constant, so that means we have something that looks like this. 
where z is actually a squared. So we can go ahead and plug that in. So I have volume is equal to four times the one integral left, z equals zero to four. And here we end up with x times a squared minus x, or in this case, it'll be z minus x squared to the one half power divided by two. And then plus a squared is z divided by two times the inverse sine of x over a, which is the square root of z, evaluated from zero to the square root of z. We still have our dz, because the last integral is going to be over the integral z. Now let's plug everything in. We have v is equal to four times the integral from z equals zero to four of. When we plug in the upper limit, the square root of z squared is z, z minus z is zero. So we get zero for the first term, plus plug in the square root of z, divided by the square root of z is one, the inverse sine of one is 90 degrees or pi over two. Uh, so here we have z divided by two times the pi divided by two, right? So this will give us pi over two because it's the inverse sine of one and we still have z over two here. Then when we plug in the lower limit, zero into x, that gives us zero. Oh, I should actually subtract because it's a lower limit, minus zero. And then we plug in zero for here, the inverse sine of zero is also zero. And we get times dz. All right, so four divided by four is one times pi, that can come outside the integral sign, so this is equal to pi times integral from z equals zero to four of z dz. So now we're ready to integrate that. So this is equal to pi times z squared over 2 from 0 to 4. Correct? Yes. All right, so this is equal to pi times 4 squared over 2, which is equal to 16 divided by 2, or 8 pi. And if you remember right, that is the result that we got on the previous video when we had the paraboloid pointing in the y direction. So it looks like we got the same answer again. We probably did it correctly. It's about half or it's exactly half the volume of what it would be if we had a cylinder of radius 2 and height 4. And that looks like it's about right that this is half the volume of what you would have had a cylinder there instead of paraboloid. So it looks pretty reasonable and that is how it's done. In the x direction. I mean the x direction. No, no, no. That's that's for them to try. <laughs> Two good examples. I think they're ready to go. Actually, what I could do, I was just kind of thinking, you know, we could actually do the old-fashioned method with slices and see if we get the same volume if we do the the, the uh, what they call it the disk method of integration. So maybe on the next one we could do that. See if we get the same result. Just to check out, because how else do you know that you did this correctly? Right? You want to do one where we uh, do, do some slices? Sure. Okay, let's do that on the next one. So just as an example to see if it was correct. All right.